Welcome back to our fourth Google Hangout. It's good to have you with me again, and uh, I'm glad that you've got something from the previous Hangouts and that you'd come back and, and check out this one. What I want to talk about today is a subject of, or the subject, of ideal health and you. And um, more than what the ideal diet is, I don't want to be prescriptive about what the ideal diet is, what I want to do is present to you the components of the ideal diet. So um, as in typical uh, style, um, what I've done is prepared some uh, a slide presentation and uh, um, I'll cut across now and we'll have a look at, at that slide presentation. I hope you've been well since we last spoke and um, I hope you remain well in good health. But let's get across to that presentation now and we'll get going. I've got a fair bit actually of information that I wanted to share with you today so uh, it'll just be... Um, It'll be fairly quick, I guess, uh, fairly shallow in content. But let's get going. So the, sub, the, con, the, the context of today is the components of the ideal healthy diet. Um, so presentation and texture, low glycemic index, uh, pH low and neutral, uh, excluding inflammatory foods, um, excluding engineered foods, and we'll cover what that is and how I define that. Um, organic and raw foods, green foods, uh, more vegetable than uh, meat and carbs, and uh, hydration, as well as quality nutritional supplementation. So the first part of um, how we eat foods is about presentation and textures, because when the, fir the first thing that we see is when the food gets put in front of us, it has an appearance. Um, and that attracts us to the food, to eat the food. It sets our body up to to really uh, consume that food, and it's part of what our body determines as to how we're going to receive these nutrients. Uh, and then it's about the texture and the taste of the, the food that we eat. So the low glycemic index, what is that? So the glycemic index is an index of how quickly foods are translated from the food into a sugar within our bodies. Now, if we eat high glycemic foods, what happens is we'll get this huge spike uh, in sugars within our bodies. Um, insulin kicks in, and then insulin becomes the the thing that stores fat. So it's the the body's uh, hormone for storing fat. So that cuts in up here. We're storing fats here, and then our body. Our body ends up going down, sliding down, energy levels sliding, until we get down into this lower level where we get hungry, we're listless, tired, and then we eat foods again and shoom, more high glycemic foods. And it's a bit of a roller coaster, you see. But low glycemic foods have a, a different effect. They have a less high rise and also a slower release of the energy. Of course, by having high glycemic foods, the insulin resistance is reduced, the sensitivity to sugars is decreased, and the chances of getting diabetes is increased. So you can see the blood sugar comparison over here. So what's another component? Another component is low or neutral pH. Now the pH of foods determines the acidity within the foods, and of course up in the lower section, we've got in the lowest section um, off the chart, it says, is colas um, because they have such a high pH that your body can't even excrete the, the pH. Above, below 5, your body can't excrete it. Um, and then you've got at the other end of the scale where it's strange to, to see this, but you've got limes and lemons. Um, and what actually happens is these foods seem acidic when you eat them, but inside your body they actually turn the opposite. And these lemons and limes actually absorb sugars within your body and uh, neutralize the acidity of those foods. But over here it says, every single person who, had can who has cancer, and this was discovered in 1931, has a pH that is too acidic. So this is why we want to have lower pH foods. And you can have a look at this table a bit later. So another food to exclude is um, inflammatory foods. That's sugars, dairies, and wheat. And you can see all those foods over here, including fast foods. 
Um, but if you look at the table on the right, Wheels anti-inflammatory food table, you can see you've got uh, fruits and veggies down the bottom here, um, fish and seafood in the middle, and of course up the top there, uh, though unfortunately it says you're not allowed to have enough of them, um, dark chocolate. So lo excluding inflammatory foods. And the inflammatory foods are critical to be excluded because they cause issues within our body, issues such as degenerative diseases. Now, moving across now to the uh, engineered foods, and in here I include um, GMOs, I'm including grain-fed um, chickens, grain-fed cattle, grain-fed fish, which in a lot of those situations, the grains and the foods that they're fed are GMO. A lot of them include antibiotics to either remove um, infection from the environment in which they live, such as the fish, but also can be to change the gut flora so that the fish and the animals actually grow fat faster. And the other thing that I'm going to include in engineered foods is these chemicals, the artificial chemicals and flavourings that go into foods. These things should be excluded from the ideal diet. Why? Because again, they cause inflammation, they cause degeneration of the body. So what should be included? Organic and raw foods, because as we said the other day, you've got lots of antioxidants in uh, fruits and veggies and nuts, um, and they're good for us and nourish our body. And you can see down here the benefits of raw food. Weight loss, improved skin, mental clarity, better sex. Um, there was a study done in Japan pre-tsunami, pre and this was of a particular town that had long life expectancy. People were living over 100 years. And in this study, they found that their diet primarily consisted of fruits and veggies, a little bit of meat, and a, a lot more fish, and their life expectancy was quite high. Whereas the Western diet is actually a lot more meat, a lot of processed foods and very little greens and tiny weeny bit of fish. So you can see here in the Western, in the low risk Eastern diet, no processed foods. And that comes back to that um, engineered foods that I was talking about earlier, removing them. Of course, hydration is important because our body is 75% water. And I'm excluding in here things like diuretics as coffee, tea, alcohol, soda. Um, all of those things are actually going to do more harm, or, well, Again, particularly soda is going to do a lot of harm, but they're going to take fluid from your body. You want to keep the, the water up in your body to 75% or higher. So there's a calculation there of how much water to drink. Of course, I'll just come back to this in a minute. Of course, the ideal diet would include a nutritional, a quality nutritional supplement because you couldn't eat enough uh, nutrition throughout the day. 18.5 uh, oranges. Uh, 85 bananas, they're medium size, but still by the same token, um, you know, you can't eat enough, 9 ounces of baked cod, you can't eat enough food throughout the day to nourish the cells as a quality nutritional you'd be able to. Mind you, you probably couldn't afford it either, afford it from a, a, a cost or from a calorie point of view. And you can see the list of um, the material where we source this information from today. So just to recap, so enjoyment of foods is critical. Um, the health of the diet involves low GI, organic non-engineered food, low pH, raw foods, in, no inflammatory foods and good hydration, augmented with nutritional supplements. And finally, if you think this is great information, please come and join us on, on um, Facebook come and see us and uh, let's have a chat. So that's all I have to present to you today. Thanks very much for listening. It's good to have you with me. Look forward to speaking to you soon. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoy good health. Bye.